Okay, the meeting will be in order. Let's make sure we get it on the video. Uh, so we're going to hand the attendance list around, so everybody will get a chance to get it, do it, and uh, uh, it would be good if we could uh, start that rather than having a lot of people in the middle. So this is the uh, World Science Fiction Society business meeting, in case we're looking for something else. Um, introducing the staff, uh, the Marlowe that you have at Grace Renner, the Sergeant at Arms, uh, Seth Breitbart, our timekeeper. Uh, in the middle, we have Lisa A, our videographer. Immediately uh, to my left is Linda Denneroff, the uh, secretary, uh, the hardworking secretary. Good morning. Uh, Kent Bloom, sitting in the audience, is the deputy presiding officer, in case I should peel over or something during the meeting. And uh, I'm Donald Eastway, uh, presiding officer. So, um, here's some of the sort of announcements. Uh, and as you may tell from the camera, unless there's less meeting votes otherwise, everybody's free to record, take pictures, take videos, whatever. There's an official videographer recording this session. Uh, for that reason, it's particularly good if you and this is a very brief remark you have that I can repeat. Uh, it's all very good to come up to the lectern uh, here and speak into the microphone there. That way everybody can hear you. And uh, when, you, when you do that or not, you just be sure to announce your name. The secretary can have that. And uh, I'm directing the secretary to interrupt me if she can't get the name or has a problem. And we'll, we'll wait until we can get the name before we go on. There's an events list going around that people are aware. Uh, you just need to indicate your attendance for today, if your name is already on there, to the place at the end if you're not listed for the nice and attending previous business meetings. Um, yes, we have business meeting ribbons. Uh, they're the same as yesterday, so for ten people attend any of the sessions. So feel free to just come up here and get one or get a couple if you have there's a group of people that don't have them. I usually turn off any uh, sound making <coughs> communication devices. Uh, Things like that. Uh, either turn them off or silence them. Um, there's, uh, by the way, there's no constitutional amendments coming up for ratification this year. So we sort of have a category of business which is usually very high priority, which is empty this year. There were no constitutional amendments passed for the first time last year. So they're going to coming up for ratification this year. Um, one little thing is uh, I noticed uh, some typos in the Constitution and standing rules. They're very minor. Uh, places where there are references to section 6.3 that should be references to section 6.4 of the Constitution. <laughs> These errors have been there, I think, for three years. <laughs> and nobody's noticed them, so you can tell they're not really that important. But, you know, just for the sake of correctness, I thought I would point them out. Um, so my, what was my initial remarks? Uh, Kevin Stanley, that uh, initial remark you wanted to make. Yes, sir. Mr. Chairman, uh, Kevin Stanley, husband of the videographer, <laughs> uh, not a member of the staff, but uh, as some of you may know, uh, we did upload the videos taken yesterday, which were in four parts. They are just raw video. Uh, we're not doing any editing or trying to get anything cleaned up on that, but we're getting it out there as fast as we can. However, attempting to download it over my, uh, upload it over my smartphone would have taken over 2,000 minutes per video. Uh, and I thought that would be a bad idea in spraying for the $16 a day high speed video, uh, video or uh, high speed internet connection in the hotel. I would gratefully uh, accept any donations toward the cost of continuing this for the remainder of this. However, we do have a, a donor lined up to cover whatever anyone might not want to. I'm not trying to be a money grubber, but if you feel like you might like to call, see me after the meeting rather than disrupting this meeting. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And should you, should you pay more money than you need, what will you do Give it to we'll just, I'll stop <laughs> accepting donations once I reach that because the maximum would be 16 times 3. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'd like to sort of go over the agenda uh, currently for this meeting. So, I believe all of the resolutions were taken care of yesterday and the committee reports were heard. Uh, in almost all cases. So uh, these are the surviving uh, constitutional amendments. Um, and uh, there's also a list of the ones which were eliminated by uh, a sustained objection to consideration yesterday. Um, the young adult Hugo was so eliminated, but there's a committee formed to study that question. So I anyway, have to go through these new, uh, I mean, uh, new constitutional amendments. Uh, 
uh, which if they're approved this year, will get up more for ratification next year. Uh, then, on the same word we had yesterday, the next thing would be the mark protection for the election. And I think we can, um, uh, when we get to that, I'll have a specific procedure to expedite that a little bit. <coughs> Uh, there are uh, constitutional amendments from committee reports uh, that are there. Uh, there were two WorldCon reports which they didn't appear to be a representative of the WorldCon present yesterday, so we'll see if they have a representative today. And I, I made one more slide just to kind of clarify uh, what committees there are, because it might be confusing for new people. So there's uh, different sort of categories of committee. There's the Mark Protection Committee is actually a committee of the World Science Fiction Society established by the Constitution. And it's actually created a couple of subgroups from this year. To any, any committee created by this business meeting unless we instruct them otherwise is authorized to create subcommittees if they feel like it. Uh, there are uh, two standing committees that are in the standing rule, the nitpicking and fly specking committee and the World Con Runner's Guide Editorial Committee. There are two committees uh, that we voted to continue. They're normally ad hoc committees, but they've typically have been continued for some time, actually. You have the Holy Rest of the World and Hero and the Formalization of Long List Entries Committee. And we voted to create a new uh, special committee, uh, the YA Hebrew Study Committee, yesterday. So that's just kind of a, who wants to know what's, what's going on with different committees. So, is that uh, okay as an agenda for this meeting? Uh, but uh, the last slide is not, not an agenda slide, it was just an informative slide. There are no objections. I guess we will proceed um, with the business in this order. So the first item is uh, the World on Publications Constitution Amendment, which is on page uh, 34. And so we don't have a new, we didn't bother to have a new agenda for today. Um, so, would the, uh, the maker or something said no, uh, something that I could speak to that initially? To, to support that? Or you get to speak to this. Lisa, you get to speak. Okay. Fingers, I just put a cough drop in my mouth. I'm Lisa Hayes. I made the original proposal for the amendment we were going to discuss. I was trying to make it simple, and its main function was to remove the financial burden of publications from World Cups. That was the only intention. It is not intended in any way to remove written publications. It's simply to remove the cost. Now the cost is entirely on the person receiving such publications at their entire choice. That's all it was trying to do. It's simple, and it may not be necessary in the future years, but I think right now it's a good thing to tell the conventions, hey, if somebody wants it, send it to them, but charge them. That's all there is to it. Thank you. Um, we have a written notice of a uh, amendment. Uh, yeah, um, I would like to speak to your amendment, which is carried forward from yesterday to today. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Colin Harris. Um, the wording of the basic motion appears simple and sensible. However, in discussions I had with a number of people, um, some unwanted side effects were apparent. Um, and also that, that caused me to look at the current practice in more detail. And for those of you who um, read the material in, in the commentary, I provided, you know, we refer to generally um, available publications, we don't actually define what those are in the Constitution. We don't actually send everything to everybody anyway, so for instance, no-show attend attending adults get sent a souvenir book from supporting members. We don't always send them the pocket program, it usually depends how many we have left over, so we're not very consistent in our practice. Um, one of the side effects I referred to, um, as some working in promotions and publications in the past, I've often looked at complementing traditional um, progress reports with electronic newsletters. You know, progress reports are once every six months, offering a monthly update to those who want it would seem like a good thing. But, and that would, I'm sure you would have to agree that's sensible, but some people have said, if we did this, we'd be obligated to say, if you're not on email, 
you could insist that we post you a printed copy of each of those monthly email newsletters. Yes, you might be able to charge a few dollars for the cost, but the inconvenience of such things would rapidly put people off doing it. My belief is that a good piece of governance um, documentation is no longer than it needs to be. I'd remind everybody that we don't say in the Constitution that the Worldcon should even last five days or it should be held in the summer. We refer to generally available publications. We don't define any publications anybody has to provide. It seems to me redundant to start putting in specific details on an issue where we don't even describe in a coarse way the, the bigger issue. So my belief is that we should stop trying to constrain this, rely on a common sense of committees. Thank you. Uh, is there a speech against the amendment? Is it against the proposed change? I should have mentioned that there's a five minute time limit uh, on all of this. The wording in this proposal was kept simple to allow it to be interpreted by the committees, but with the intent of providing such information as they provide other places in a paper form that can be sent to someone who may not or does not want to have it electronically or may want to have it for archival purposes from the official source. I do not believe in any way that this overly complicates the finances of a convention. I have talked to many chairs of other major conventions and they say this would not be a very difficult thing to do at all. They would actually enjoy it because it would remove any financial burden. I mean, yes, they would have to collect money and send it, but they would know the numbers <coughs> up front before they did so. In this intent, if you were wanting your uh, newsletter or the uh, progress reports, as I should say, you would ask, I want those. And they said, well, we're going to have to charge you a couple of dollars, maybe five, maybe 15, because we're going to send it by first class postage. And you say, okay, fine. This is no more than trying to say, we want a t-shirt. Well, you have to pay for it. So I don't think it's a complication. I don't think it's um, overly wordy or adds too much of intent, okay. but it does focus to the convention what our intent was. We, Thank you very much. The time in favor of the amendment has been exhausted. Is there a speech against the amendment? That was a speech against the amendment. That was against. That was against the. That was against. That was against Collins' amendment. Yes. But it's all for yes. the. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. There's a speech in, in favor of the amendment. Sorry. Total time. Oh. Okay. We only had eight seconds on the for the front side. So, yes. Uh, if somebody has eight seconds. They have a speech they'd like to give, and perhaps. Uh, <laughs> Ben, yeah, well, um, speaking now in my hat as the budget director for the last two world cons, I do not want to even think about the complications of trying to figure out how much something costs. Marginal, etc. It's nuts. You can't do it. Okay, so uh, I'm going to exhaust the uh, questions on the substitution, amendment by substitution. Uh, to replace uh, 4.1.1 one by 4.1.1.2 uh, on the agenda. Uh, those in favor of the uh, replacement text, please raise your hand. Thank you. Those in favor of the original text, the ayes have it, so the uh, amendment by substitution passes. And the overall time limit was five minutes, so we've exhausted that also, unless somebody wishes to extend. Yes? Move to extend the debate by five more minutes. Second. A second. Second. It's been moved and seconded to extend debate time by five minutes. This is undebatable. What? Uh, it takes two thirds to do that. All those in favor of extending debate time, please raise your hand. Thank you. All those opposed? Uh, thanks. Uh, less than two thirds in favor. Debate time is not extended. Uh, the vote is now on uh, the uh, motion as amended. Those in favor of the motion, please raise your hand. Thank you. Those opposed? The ayes have it. And the uh, motion passes, so this will appear for ratification next year. Uh, next motion is... Uh, 4.1.2, no representation without taxation. Uh, the debate time is 10 minutes. 
Uh, with the mayor, do you wish to speak? My name is Priscilla Olson. There's been a lot of conversation already about this amendment, especially when it was under its original unfortunate title, No Cheap Voting. This amendment was never meant to um, uh, somehow keep poor or young or any other kinds of fans from enjoying World Con participation. However, the important part is we're all in this together. Participation in the World Con should be something that allows you to vote for whether it's site selection or Yugos or anything else. Um, we can do a constitution yesterday and there's a lot of confusion about what a WISFIS member actually is. And I can start reading off uh, constitutional amendments, 1.5.1. says, each world con shall offer supporting and attending memberships. What my uh, amendment actually does is clarify what aspect of membership makes people eligible to vote. In, in uh, under site selection, it says voting shall be um, for WISFIS members. And if we, uh, in uh, UGO membership, it says only WISFIS members may vote. Um, under 1.5.8, it says other memberships and fees shall be at the discretion of the World Con Committee. All I'm suggesting right now is whatever these memberships and fees are, that they are um, uh, on par with um, supporting memberships. There have been times in the past when attending memberships have had, had uh, the right to, attending one day memberships have had the right to vote for site selection. There's been a lot of uh, discussion about selling you go only memberships. That's not the same as participating within our community. So I strongly urge people who want to keep the world con a participatory community think about setting this small bar, and smaller now that the publications issue has been resolved, for allowing voting in either any of the witness uh, issues. Thank you very much. Good. Is your game? Christopher J. Garcia, um, as a minority, aka a broke American, um, I really believe that this does the ultimate thing that we should not ever even consider. It doesn't allow a minimum of participation, which allows someone who might even be a little worse off than me to participate in any form. A voting only membership would be the most exceptional way to spread the idea of the Hugos and of the Wismas as a whole. And to not have that be at a minimum of the rate of a supporting membership is ridiculous. Thanks. Still today, I'm Dave McCarty. Um, the the the. The idea of a voting only membership for voting only in the Hugos is really a very large step towards dissociating the Hugos from, from WISFIS and the Worldcon, and I think it's a very, very, very bad idea. I believe that the Hugos are entirely controlled by WISFIS and the Worldcon, and the idea that somebody can participate in one without the other is just heinous to me. Warren Buff. While I agree in principle that we should be keeping the membership rights of WISPAS together, I also believe that the following amendment 4.1.3 would do a better job of it. Uh, so I am against this, but in favor of the principle. Speech in favor. I'm still Glenn Glazer. Um, I've been, some, uh, Dave spoke eloquently about the Hugo aspect. I'm going to speak about the site selection aspect. Um, if you can have a Hugo only voting membership, you can have a site selection voting membership. Um, I've talked to people who want to vote in site selection but aren't going to go to the Worldcon. Um, I find this distorting and, and weird. And, and you know, um, I would really not want, I mean, some people just can't afford one year or another, I understand that, but um, 
to, to associate the people who attend the convention with the people who are choosing its location. Um, no, that, that's not right. Mr. Chairman, parliamentary question. Yes. Uh, when would it be in order, it, would it be in order, when would it be in order to propose that this question be referred to committee on the grounds that um, the proposal of the motion has raised an issue that there is a slightly broader question, just the issue of the motion. As long as the motion is pending and you get the assignment for it, you can then move to, to refer to committee. Thank you. I trust uh, Perry. Perry and Mary still. Uh, <laughs> I, I trust the world cons to be able to set their own membership rates. I don't favor separating the voting rights, but that's a separate issue from this one. I think that this this sends the wrong message to fandom at large. It says we're exclusionary. It says you know it's expensive to join, which it not necessarily is. I trust the world con committee to decide how much they should charge for supporting memberships. And I don't have a problem with them giving discounted rates to people who are hardship cases and still allowing them to participate. I have a problem with saying, here's a voting only membership, but that's not what this issue is. This is, the Worldcon has to charge a minimum of this much to be able to give, you know, let people be a member of the community. I'm opposed to that. That was a speech against. <laughs> I'm Stover Kowalczyk. Um, I'm sorry if this is going to offend anyone. I don't trust the world con. There's a number of times before we've said that, where we said we're going to do the right thing with breaking up uh, best dramatic presentation between long form and short form. And uh, then we proceeded the next year to actually put a movie which should have been in long form in short form. I don't trust the world con. And uh, I think that uh, no, as we've gotten ourselves twisted in the presence before by doing things like giving an aspect to Dragon Con and we run the risk of uh, other bids like that, and uh, I think this is a really bad idea. Sometimes you do need to legislate. Speech again. Hi, I'm Stephen Krzywicki. Um, I'm sorry, can I see you? I'm Stephen Krzywicki. Can't this kind of bad. Sure. Um, one of the things that this uh, amendment does is lock in inflation. There's no way for the uh, membership to go back down regardless of what it costs, regardless of what incomes. Uh, if someone one year decides to jack the supporting membership of $250, it must stay there. There is no way for it to go back down. Let him speak, we let him speak. The amendment. We did. Also, why are people trying to circumscribe, uh, circumscribe um, innovation? Can you imagine what it would look like today if all phones were mandated to have a cord and a crank? Why are we saying you may not this is something that is flexible for people, or should be, and it can let people decide based on their own location, based on their own circumstances, what they want to provide. Worldcon should be inclusive. It's a world con. Trying to limit things like this, including the next time, are saying, no, 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 it has to be plus. Just the people coming here. This has to stop. And Reverend, I, I think that it's clear that there are various uh, views on this issue, not just on the precise issue before us, but that there are various issue, uh, views on the complicated issue of what membership in Worcester constitutes and the fact that the constitution is not really clear enough at the moment on what membership constitutes and what the voting constitutes on that. So I would move that we create a committee um, for the forthcoming year um, to study the issue of me what membership in Worcesters means and to propose amendments to the constitution to make that absolutely clear. Uh, point of inquiry? Well, you have to just move to refer this to the committee. Yeah. Uh, point of inquiry. Um, I'm Lisa Paddle. If there is a, is there a do we vote on whether there is to be a committee? And if so, how do I ask for that vote to be put off until after the discussion of both no representation and keep us together? Because I think the votes on that affect the committee. What we should do is after, uh, assuming the motion is seconded and so on, then you can get sure and move to postpone. 
control after the uh, other motions are considered. Thanks. Give me sure. So is there a second? Is there a second? Second. Okay. Second. 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 I have a subsidiary amendment. So the time is exhausted, but, but uh, it, it has, uh, the subsidiary motions are still allowed under our rules. Mr. Chairman, I, I move to amend the motion to commit by referring item, where is it there, 4.1.3 to it as well. Okay. Referring both items which are in overlap. Is there a second to that? Uh, second. 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 Okay. Uh, any objection? Uh, Okay. All those uh, wait, 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 wait. Yes. They would put the two together as a single amendment. Is that correct? No, no. it would no. refer both of them okay. to the committee. Okay. The committee can then, will then actually report, report, report back, and that the committee should report uh, its opinions on each of these motions, any amendments, any other motions that think should be considered. It actually can't, technically, it can't actually change the motions. <coughs> The, the motions are referred to it, they come back, but they can propose amendments and things like that, which would then be voted on by the business meeting. So the idea is to, to send both of these. Because of the way this is, I believe this is really requires a two-thirds vote, the kind of suspension of the rules, because we're combining items on the agenda and things like that. Um, but if the, there's two-thirds in favor, we can certainly uh, do that. Um, what is clarification? Sure. When, would the, when would the committee be required to report back? Next year. Well, we, we could change it to report tomorrow, but maybe it takes more than a day. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, uh, those in favor of. Uh, what information, Mr. Chair? Yeah, sure. Uh, I'm new, so I'm a little confused. Uh, this particular vote is the vote to take the motion to commit. Yes. Yeah. 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 You're going to have to come to the.
Okay, sorry to complicate things, but uh, I was approached after the business meeting yesterday uh, with some concerns that the text of this amendment was overly complicated. So I am going to, uh, and my apologies that we don't have copies of this available, I'm going to read off a proposed change to this amendment in order to put it into a simpler language. It's actually an amendment by substitution, so it will replace the text in the written agenda with a new shorter text. All right, the, the substitution that we'd like to make is 2.9.5. All financial reports shall include the convention's name, mailing address, and other contact information, including the name of the person submitting the report, and if applicable, the name of the convention's parent organization, its tax exempt status, the location of the corporation, its address, website, email, and other contact information, and the names and titles of its current officers. Does the amended item still have the second paragraph of the of 2.9.5? No, no. no. It's my opinion that the proviso uh, is uh, unnecessary. Thank you. Uh, so I, I'm in favor of this, this change to the amendment, which preserves pretty much the entire intent of the original, uh, only in much simpler text. Mm -hmm. And I, I thank Mark Olson for helping me to revise it. Is there any objection to this amendment? Yeah. Maybe we have it read a second time. Sure. Uh, why don't you let me read it just a second time? Maybe a different voice will. <laughs> you got it up there. Yeah. Right. So this is a, I believe, actually slightly less than half the length of the current text. The new proposed text is: all financial reports shall include the convention's name, mailing address, and other contact information, including the name of the person submitting the report, and, if applicable, the name of the convention's parent organization its tax exempt status, location of incorporation, its address, website, email, and other contact information, and the names and titles of its current officers. Uh, is there any objection to the amendment? Point of inquiry, Mr. Yeah. Chairman. If I would suggest a slight amendment to those rules, should I wait until this is done and then propose another one, or should I address it now? Go now. Go now? Go now. Go now. Uh, I would suggest that Up we to change. The mic. Yes, yes. 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 <laughs> I am Remain Dave McCarty. Uh, I would suggest that we change the uh, the language about the person submitting to say the person the person certifying and submitting because I don't want to know who handed it in. I wanted to know who's saying their name says these numbers are accurate. Uh, persons, report one S, certifying and submitting? Persons certifying and submitting, yes. Okay. Is there any objection to that change to the substitution? Seeing none, change that one. So is there any objection to making this amendment by substitution? Seeing none, the main motion is amended to this new revised text. Uh, we still have debate time available for debate on the motion. Can I just As amended. Call the yep. Mr. Okay. Is there, is there anybody who wishes to speak? Seeing nobody wishes to speak, then uh, we will proceed to a vote. Uh, all those in favor of this constitutional amendment, please raise your hand. Thank you. All those opposed? Thank you. The ayes have it, and this will come up for ratification next year. Uh, next item is uh, 4.1.8. We expand the best fan artist to include all types of fanish art, not just static and visual. That's the short title. Sure. Sure. We have eight minutes to wait time for this. I'm Joshua Chronicle, and I submitted this motion. Um, fans work in all forms of art. 
um, arguably the existing provisions creating best artist, um, ignoring the fact they require that it appear in um, a um, in public display, which seems to imply websites uh, or in fanzines, applies to any forms of art um, in any case. But this would clarify that when we refer to fan artists, we refer to fan artists that working in any medium, not merely fan artists who are um, visual artists or cartoonists. Additionally, there's a hole in the um, uh, best artist um, such that a, a public display that is commercial still qualifies you for best fan artist. Um, because um, if you'll note um, on your agenda, um, it just says through other public display. It doesn't say it has to be non-commercial display um, the way a uh, fanzine or semi-pro zine is, is designed is defined as a non-commercial organ. So this would clarify that the public display must be non-commercial. Thank you. Please speak your names. I support the idea of putting the words non-professional in uh, because that really does accomplish things. On the other hand, once you start opening it up to performance medium, that means that what you've now done is you've said that something is eligible in best dramatic presentation for whatever length it is. Uh, because quite frankly, most of these performance medium is, things in, are covered by dramatic presentations. I therefore would move to amend by striking all of the changes except the one that adds the words non-professional into uh, the text of 3316. Is there a second? Second. Okay. 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 Any questions on the amendment to strike everything, all the changes except for non-professional, except for the insertion of non-professional? Uh, is there a speech against that change? several things that are performances that are not covered by dramatic presentation. Take Amy McNally. I don't know if you've seen her. She's an amazing fiddler. The work that she does and the work that she does in fandom isn't covered by dramatic presentation, but she's a valuable part of the fan community and she does provide a service. She plays in concerts, she shows up, she participates in the community. I think that saying that she shouldn't be eligible for an artist award even though she really is an artist because her work doesn't qualify under dramatic presentation is perhaps narrowing the scope. While I agree with the spirit that things shouldn't be eligible in two categories, I think that merely that, that this proposed amendment doesn't actually achieve that goal. It narrows the scope too much. Uh, speech in favor. Thank you. I'm still Colin Harris. At least that wasn't my last one. Um, I was actually about to move on this identical amendment to then. Um, to strike at least the all performance. We do actually have other ways of recognizing things like music, um, other than BDP, um, in uh, related work, but Wicked Girls was recently nominated. Uh, my concern is that the core of the Hugos for 60 years has been written fiction, fan work, uh, and visual art. Um, I believe the two visual art Hugos are really important, and I don't feel that shuffling the deck chairs by shunting um, animations, um, filk CDs, and so on, into a visual art category is healthy for visual art as a whole. I don't believe that the other kinds of fanish performance are unrepresented. We have related work, we have BDP, and we have fan cast. And so I believe that, with, as Ben says, a useful clarification on non-professional, the rest of this change will actually be very unhealthy for us. So I prefer the simpler amendment. Let's speak again. Seth Breitbart. Uh, first, this is an award for an artist, not a specific item. So it does not create any overlap with dramatic presentation. For instance, a filker who writes 87 pretty good songs and performs each of them a dozen times in the course of a year, there is no specific performance that has any chance of winning. But the person, the artist, might very well be felt to be the best 
such artist in that year. Preaching in favor of the uh, An inquiry. Could uh, I, I, I think I understand what the amendment was, Mr. Chairman, but I could, could uh, I'm not absolutely certain what the section would then read after the amendment, pa pa if the amendment were to pass. Could the chair read back what the section would read after, if the amendment passes? Sure, the, the amendment would change this to only in certain non-professionals, so the section would then read, an artist or cartoonist whose work has appeared through publication in summer pro zines or fan zines or through other professional, other public non-professional display, including at a convention or convention during the... No. 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 Oh, sorry. Display. Yes, <laughs> display during the previous calendar year. Yes. And the provision would, of course, tack on, the provided that clause would stay in? No. Yes. No. Uh, no, 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 not. Not the way the amendment is currently worded. Okay. But I, I don't, you know, that's just... Ms. Well, well, then I'd like the floor, if, unless you recognize him instead. Mm -hmm. I, I want to move in, a, I want to ask the unanimous consent request. Um, That'll be quick. Okay. I'd like to ask unanimous consent that the provision be uh, put back in it as part of the amendment. No, no. Okay. provided. The provided that. The provided that. The second clause. paragraph. The, the provided that unless this amendment is re-ratified clause. No. no. All right. Okay. No, Anybody wish to speak on the uh, amendment here on the floor? Yeah. For it or again? it? Four. Okay. Rich Lynch, I, I fully support uh, Ben's amendment. Uh, uh, I think, uh, as written, this blurs the distinction between uh, a couple of the categories, which is not really a good thing. We already have the best fan cast now that covers presentations. I believe costumers are, are more properly categorized as a craft, not as an art. Musicians are musicians, not artists. They're color artists, but they're really musicians. Uh, I, I prefer clean categories. Uh, Ben's, Ben's amendment does this. I think it should be. I think it should be accepted. Okay. So time. Uh, the time against has been exhausted. Are there any other speeches in favor? No. Yes. Uh, uh, there the
suspend the rules that prohibit second order amendments to allow Collins' amendment to go to be voted on. Is there a second? Second. 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 Is there any objection? Yes. Yes. All those in favor of suspending the rules to allow the second order amendment, please raise your hand. Thank you. All those opposed? Thank you. There being more than two thirds in favor, the rules are suspended by the second order amendment. Is there a second for the amendment? Second. 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 Move and second it to uh, have the amended so that it now the change the first order amendment so that if it passed, it would change this to uh, both non professional and included at a committee board of mentions. Yep. May I call the question on the secondary? Yes, you may. Well, you, you move that to that motion. Okay, move to call the question on the second order amendment. Yes. yes. Okay, is there a second Thank for that? Second. 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 Is there anybody who wishes to speak? Please raise your hand. Seeing nobody, uh, we will proceed to vote on the second order amendment. Those in favor of uh, adding back in included at a convention or conventions, please raise your hand. Thank you. Those opposed? The ayes have it, and the second order amendment passed. We're now, the question is now on the amendment to uh, uh, change this so that it would only insert non professional and included at a convention or conventions. Um, we have. Uh, we all know. Let's have a brief recess, which will not count.